this is awesome. It's like set up. It's like a Zoom alternative now. Okay, nice. No, I'm not surprised they got their game together. I noticed about a year ago, I was like, oh, they're still in the same, like they haven't updated the app in five years or something. So uh, I'm not surprised they kind of got their, got their, uh, got the business together with uh, Zoom being such a uh, you know, powerful alternative. Right. So the, I'm looking at your um, I'm looking at your Facebook profile here, and I was looking at your Skype name, and you've got like six names. Is it Clint or is it Moses Edwin? I, uh, I was given the name Clint at birth, uh, but yeah. the story the story goes that kind of like a mistake. Even my parents were like, "Oh yeah, like we were supposed to name you Dylan," and it was like last minute change. And then years ago, I don't know, whatever. It's a series of stories behind each name. Uh, I've, I've just, yeah, it's been a journey uh, of names. <laughs> but uh, Moses seems to be the one that like, that, like, fits the best. Uh, you know, I don't know. It just seems to, like, fit archetypally, energetically. When I hear it, That's even cool. as a kid, I'd hear the name Clint, and I would just, like, kind of make me, like, like, it made me feel awkward when I would hear my own name as a child. Maybe that's normal human psychology, but that was the situation for me. And uh, Moses just yep. feels like um, I hear it and it feels like the right energy somehow. So I, I keep it that one. Cool. Yeah, so just incidentally for people who are watching, uh, I'm, chat I'm chatting to, <coughs> to uh, Moses Edwin. Um, I'm trying to pronounce the last name here, which is Char. It's like it almost looks like Chakuni ah. Kiluar. Chakuni or all right. So so For let me I'll, we'll just do this. Yeah. So Chaikuni is a is a Shipibo word uh for that's like a Shipibo name. I have a name in Africa also in the Bwiti tradition. Uh and then I have a Shipibo name. Uh Edwin is the name that the star people call me. That's like a that's like a connection to the ancestral lineage there. Um that came in a nice way and uh so I put it on there. And then Lua is uh, a Portuguese word for the light of the moon. The light from the moon is Lua. Nice. And uh, nice work. again, like came in a nice way. And I had this moment years ago where I was like, really, am I going to do this? And, and uh, I was like in a ceremony moment. And the, the voice that came through was like, be proud of the name that we gave you. Like spirit is giving yeah. you a name and you should be like proud of that, carry that. Like it's a gift, um, like the connection to the mother and the father actually matters, and the, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Uh, nice. more than my oh, yeah, I should... name, I feel like in it. That's no, cool. It's cool. Yeah, I, I sometimes wonder about that myself because you know I just go by my normal name, but several people I know have kind of moved more towards spiritual names, so it's just interesting. It's uh, it's cool. I should mention part of the reason we're talking just for people who are watching the video is because, you know, every now and then on Facebook, I see you commenting and talking about um, basically doing a lot of plant dietas. And then a couple of months ago, I think it was, you were writing some, some pretty poetic text, which was really impressive. I was an English major, so I'm really critical of people's writing. <laughs> and it was like, wow, it was really good writing about the plants and the spirits and i was like wow this guy actually knows what he's talking about that's really cool and that's why i thought it might be really interesting to talk and also because it seems like what you're doing is you're sort of doing sort of like uh dietas i guess you're sort of guiding dietas in like a really a really interesting way so maybe it would be good uh, for you to talk about maybe just like um like because i don't really I know you. I've seen you talking on Facebook, and I've got a pretty strong uh, feeling for your um, authenticity, integrity, just from what you've written. Because I know, I know bullshit when I read it, and that's not what you're writing. You know, you're writing really good stuff. Um, plus, uh, so I'd like to talk about that, and then after that, you've also got another project going on here, which uh, is is about uh, working the land currently in Brazil, I guess, and you've got a. Uh, I can't remember the the terminology. We can, we can get to that about how to manage the land, and so you've got really sort of pretty ambitious, <clears throat> um, ecologically interesting way 
which seems to be based on the human being realigning with the environment and a um, whole bunch of interesting things, which I thought would be interesting. And also, you know, a lot of times on this channel, like in the past, I talked about ayahuasca and plant medicine all the time, which I haven't done much lately because I've been totally focused on meditation and other sort of things. So maybe we can get into that too at some point. But maybe right now it'd be interesting to hear kind of like um, you're in Brazil now, you're at a piece of land which you're trying to develop. But I'm imagining that's, I'm imagining your experience with this stuff goes back a little, you've probably got a bit of a story here. No, I read recently, I thought you were American, but are you American? You're not American, right? Yeah, no, I'm American originally, yeah. Oh, you are, okay. Cool. And so how did you get from uh, uh, from your state down to, how? what brought you to this plant medicine status here? Yeah, so uh, nice, I'll just dive in there, I guess. I'm from I'm from Texas originally, and uh, I I met uh, the medicine like ayahuasca in Texas uh, about ten years ago uh, through a, a Brazilian. He's the reason that I'm in this location. And um, interesting enough, like uh, I was basically, you know, in a similar way. I think I think you have sort of an experience of there being. A, uh, a higher realm, a higher register of consciousness that we can access within a human incarnation. And uh, before my first experience with ayahuasca, I didn't really have that. Um, you know, I had read Be Here Now, and like, you know, I was aware of, you know, people who had who had touched it or seen it as like a story. You know what I mean? But the the yeah. realistic idea, the idea of that actually being for my incarnation, uh, didn't really didn't really like. Uh, catch for me until until the first time I drank ayahuasca. And basically, the man uh, Norberto, he was a very special Norberto Jurasek. Uh, so I guess they a Brazilian from this region where I am now. He was a illuminated being. He was like fully enlightened being. And uh, in a weekend, uh, through pouring the medicine, like quite strong, he served you <coughs> strong doses and and lots of them. Uh, but also sit and hold a space. He would sit and meditate and, and hold a, a frequency uh, um, that he could somehow bring everybody up into that level. And I feel like it somehow resonates with you and your, your Shaktipat sort of experiences and this kind of line, because he was, he was uh, from the Santa Daimi line, but also a student of Osho and had been to India and like, you know, he's kind of a, a beautiful blend of, of energies. And yeah, so basically that, that experience kind of like opened the, the ceiling of my existence, meeting somebody and being 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 open to that level of of enlightenment, um, you know, really kind of I feel like I got I got dipped in the I got dipped in the sauce my first time in like a really exceptional way, you know, a very uh, massive blessing to have been initiated into that level of consciousness um, through that the channel of, of ayahuasca and and. Uh, under somebody who had who had attained quite so well. So uh, from there, for me, it was just a clear like, you know, you go up and then and then eventually, you know, you're gonna you're gonna hit level again wherever your vibration is. And and uh, from that level that I hit afterwards, definitely it was a it was a level up from where I was before. Uh, but clearly from that point, it was like okay, healing is the path. Healing is the path. So let's um, let's begin that that journey. And that kind of got me into the you know, onto the path, I guess. Um, before that, I had a lot of psychedelic experience and things like that, but, but there wasn't, it wasn't a real goal and there wasn't a real path until that moment, uh, for sure. Um, Do you think it's like, yeah, and I guess, it's you know, interesting, it it's interesting you had a bunch of like psychedelic experiences beforehand. I also did have a bunch of psychedelic experiences like way back 20 years before I did ayahuasca, but completely not spiritual. Interesting visuals, the whole thing, but didn't feel anything. And sometimes I wonder, I don't know if you agree with this, I think maybe you will, is that is that it's almost like you almost need uh, a human guide to show you or to sort of initiate you, if you will, like you have been into that state of consciousness where you're like, oh, 
right? Do you think there's, so there was quite a big role there for this guy you worked with then in your life? Yeah, absolutely. You know, as I say, like, uh, really, really opened my, uh, you know, it was like meeting the Maharaji or something. It's one of those moments that, that changes your whole path. And, and uh, yeah. yeah, it wasn't just an experience of the med, but also the potential of the path itself, the potential of the medicine itself, where it, where it can take us. And, and uh, yeah, I guess, I guess I'll say that from, uh, from there, you know, I've been, I've been drinking pretty steadily during that experience. Actually, it was two, two, week, two, two weekends in a row. And during that, I had this really clear call. You need to do this alone. You need to do this alone. You need to do this alone. And it was like really clear, persistent call uh, from the beginning uh, to drink alone. And so I kind of, you know, it took me some time, took me some time, took me a couple of years to really like pick up that, that answer to that call. Uh, I did some more work. I came back down here to Brazil. Uh, this, uh, this region where I am now is really like a, um, Santo Daime is very strong here. And uh, through this guy, uh, Norberto, and then another elder, Marcelo, I was introduced, invited to the Santo Daime, introduced to this line. And uh, in a big way, it kind of like uh, definitely colors and, and opens a world within the medicine that, that, again, certain most won't have access to or won't have access uh, within the Peruvian lines. Uh, but anyway, I'll kind of like advance through the story a little bit and get to that that part because uh primarily what i'm doing now is is a is a peruvian style uh but also within a container i feel like that that very much like exemplifies the temple and the sacred landscape that we encounter here in brazil it's very much a different uh context different uh spiritual context it's much less demonic, much more spiritual much more to do with with um like spiritual evolution, it's very much a, a container yeah. or a vehicle for a spiritual. I kind of see the whole the whole path as as nature's nature's yoga or nature's path of, of helping us get to that to that place of illumination. Do you think so? That's interesting. So, have you been to Peru? Or uh, it's interesting. So you're saying what you're saying is that the it's, it, it seems to me like in Peru there is quite of a there's quite a lot of magical sort of shamanic sort of vibe going on in a lot of places i've i've not done santo daime but it certainly got that sort of sort of quasi christian slash illuminated point of view did you spend time in peru then or is, is mainly just in brazil you've been working no so after after several years drinking here uh and then also in oregon living up in california and oregon uh i began dieting i got a really strong call to begin dieting and and I was already like always attuned to the plant frequencies and interested in what was ha happening in specific plants and preparation, things like that. And then after living here, I began dieting uh, medicinal mushrooms with the call of living up in Oregon. And I guess it made sense in the environment. And also it was kind of like a progression from mushrooms to like herbs and small plants and adaptogens and then ultimately up into trees. And so uh, after two years of living in Brazil in 2018, 19, uh, I got the really strong call to, to go to Peru and, uh, it's kind of, anyway, I, I got to pick and choose which, which paths to go down at this point. Uh, but yeah, the, the call was quite strong, quite beautiful. Uh, and, and arriving in Peru, I kind of discovered the world of trees. That was sort of the, the big opening that happened there. Um, and that has really kind of like, uh, shaped the, the whole path, you know, the last, it, it's like, uh, in, in a simple way, uh, I feel like my ayahuasca work didn't really have structure to it until I began dieting trees. And then all of a sudden yeah. my own being starts to become strong and rooted and integral and branching and, and really like, uh, through that way, then we can really kind of like approach the light, you know, you can really the the force the upward the kundalini momentum the upward force the evolutionary force of ayahuasca i don't feel like can really reach its its climax its maximum without without the support of trees um and you know the daimi has a cross at the beginning at the at the middle of their container and and uh you know that may be alone enough to attain incredibly high levels uh but for me that that um that path led me to uh, to the tree of life, 
uh, and then and then in this really beautiful way to the study of actual trees, and then through that uh, kind of again like a a more mystical and, and divine uh, temple of a container to hold uh, both the diets themselves and also the medicine itself. It's really uh, I'm I'm not quite I'm not sure I'm a initiated well enough to speak to the fullness of, of kind of what it's what it's showing me but i feel like the theme is kind of like you know you you sort of i feel like i went in i, I dove in you know what i mean i dove in pretty pretty full force i moved to south america i lived in peru for five years to answer your question directly i lived in peru for five years con contiguous <coughs> five six straight years uh we both um so yeah definitely you know i say i feel like i I dove in, you know what I mean? I dove into the mystery of nature and, and what it's, uh, what it's offering with the medicine and just, you know, continue drinking and, and doing the work. And, and, um, yeah, it's, it's led me to a place now where I have a piece of land, uh, here, uh, in the beautiful mountains. I don't know if we can see well enough, but I'm in a beautiful garden. I'm in the beautiful mountains here in, in Brazil and, and, um, yeah, just kind of taking the next step. And, and uh, Nice. Yeah. I wonder, um, you know, oftentimes like uh, you talk to people and they'd love to go to Peru or Brazil, but oftentimes it's very cost prohibitive. And uh, did you have like a transition? I don't know, you, you were working in the States and then you had to change professions or maybe you're like secretly like a programmer and you're doing other work during the day. Or um, there's a couple of other people who are like military uh uh, veterans I've seen who are just living off their pensions. Uh, no, None of my business, of course. I'm just story. curious. I, no, no, no. Super welcome. Very ripe. Uh, super welcome. Yeah, no, the, funny. The words that, that came into my head was I abandoned the life of chaos and, uh, and like, aligned with life. Uh, so I was there in California, actually, uh, working in the industry, the cannabis industry, and just doing different things in the U.S. You know, I had a range of jobs and, you know, kind of like trying to make myself fit in the, uh, I don't know, excuse me, the modern slave matrix. You know what I mean? I was really trying to make it in the world, <laughs> even even in sort of way like like um of the of the the industry in California. Um, that path. Basically, like there came a time where it sort of life sort of pushed me out, and I just said yes. And uh, yeah. in order to place of of purpose and and harmony within my being, where where I'm doing something with, that utilizes all my natural talents and and the connection to nature and to life and and uh, and to healing and the betterment of others, it's a path of service that I'm on now. Um, it definitely required a number of years of of. Uh, like pretty grinding, uh, I won't say like grinding poverty, but, but basically it was a pretty grinding process for many years while I was kind of undergoing enough of my own self healing, uh, and, and learning to be able to, to sort of like rise up into the level of, of, uh, of, you know, semi-professional, uh, healing work that I'm in now, or, you know, the, the kind of realm I'm in now. And, but, but that's again, it kind of, uh, that theme of, uh, moving from slavery into freedom or from, you know, the sort of bondage to the economy, to the, to the, the world, the world is very, um, <clears throat> very sort of Gnostic, way, right? Like, uh, this, this idea of that there is a world there that is constructed, uh, by the mind and by, and based in usury and exploitation and, and slavery and sort of in, enslavement of human souls. And, and uh, it's very hard not to just see that at this point. You know what I mean? Uh, it just appears very um, clear from where I stand now uh, in the in the natural matrix and the divine matrix. And I feel very uh, cared for by by spirit and, and life and, and uh, nature. And uh, it's been quite a beautiful journey as far as all that goes. And, and yeah, it, I've reached a point where where, uh, you know, I'm not making any more money than I need for particular day as as it flows but um yeah i mean as i say kind of like uh, just recently i almost want to say receive this piece of land here in this really beautiful way um that was essentially effortless uh and and foretold in dreams for many years and in beautiful moments uh 
um, just kind of like I feel I'm in this like the the flow of life now. I'm in the stream of of purity and, and the channel of, of life force energy, and, and it's quite uh, quite beautiful. It's really interesting because you know a lot of times we hear people talking about I mean it's almost cliche talking about healing and. And then, you know, people go to lots of ceremonies and you're like, well, how, how much do you actually have to heal? And then, you know, the matrix can be like a gilded matrix. Like I was living in Miami and I was going to Starbucks three times a day and eating like going to steakhouses for lunch. And, you know, by by typical American standards, it was like a pretty good life. But I was really, really, yeah, I just felt really uh vacant in my spirit i felt like lost you know and um but i can understand like a lot of people like i would never have been able to at least at that point in my life i can't even imagine thinking how i could have moved to south america for example and like engaged with like like the way you've done because you've kind of like, like gone from there i came to south america like and i wasn't seeking plant medicine when i came here i discovered it when i got here Thank God, but um, but it's interesting because you you know I think that's um, I think that even comes up in the film The Matrix where like people actually defend it you know don't touch my, don't touch my matrix this is my this is my way of life and they don't realize that um, like just hearing you talk about the like the lib it's like liberation of the spirit and the liberation from usury and. Uh, it's, it's unbelievable. And it's hard to believe when you're living there that that could be possible, right? People are so keen to fall into $500 car payments and mortgages. And and I remember, like, I remember driving up from work and getting home at, like, 8 p.m., and then going, going for some beers, going to bed, then waking up and going to work, then coming home for some beers and going to bed. It's so crazy, and so it's funny because when we're talking about healing, I mean, in a way, what the sort of most obvious way of healing is just that. It's like the cleansing of uh, of these illusions. I think Western people, when they think of healing, they're thinking of like curing the cold, right? But what you're talking about is some other kind of healing. Yeah, well, it's interesting because I, I almost really understand uh, healing as a part of a, a bigger complex of, of, of um, sort of like renovation or restoration of what a natural life should be, you know, and you can think about it also, uh, you know, if you sort of, uh, let's try this. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll take a tree as a model or, or the Kundalini as a model. It's like, if you're plugged into uh, a false reality, if you're plugged into an, an extreme, and again, I use this language of matrix and this kind of thing. It's not a, it's not a, although I've been aware, I've been you know, awake to that, to that frame for a long time. Uh, it's not a, like a root based reactionary resentment. I'm not fighting it. You know what I mean? I'm not fighting that, that, that reality whatsoever. I I've been walking towards life. I've been seeking yeah. life and real connection, <clears throat> uh, a, a, a life fully expressed, uh, a life connected to to the real world, to the real mystery of of being and of being alive. Um, that's been the path, not a rejection of the world, but a seeking of the real, of the light, of life, of love, yeah. of these these mysteries yeah. and these, these transcendent things of of human expression that we're really like uh, blinded to, we're asleep to, we're not awake to in the in the normal world. We're we're attuned to as a spectrum of, of frequency and a, attention um, that largely includes um, reality, the actual reality. And, and uh, <laughs> it's challenging because I'm still a couple of years away from being able to like uh, to really pull the shades up on that for people. You know, what I mean, I know that I know that the practice that I'm on, uh, the path that I'm on is really one of, you know, uh, I just I just inherited this land. I want to say inherited. I just received this land, inherited this land here that that's full of ayahuasca vines. And and uh, but uh, but you know we still have to build the uh, the temple. You know what I mean? In order that we can really like um, do the work of bringing people uh, into that level of awareness. And as a model, as a beautiful model, literally today I walked up a uh, 30 minute walk up the mountains, up a path 
uh, there's no uh, electricity here. We have Wi-Fi because there's a solar panel and a, and a satellite dish, but where I'm living right now is totally off grid and uh, there's no car sounds, there's no motos, you can't get here by car. And my land is even another 30 minute walk up the mountain. And I feel like that, that dynamic of being literally physically separated from the banal world, it's like you literally have to walk up this mountain by yourself in order to, to get win, with it, not by yourself, but on your own feet. You know what I mean? You have to make the trip to come to this place and, and, uh, you know, with the group with obviously, you know, brothers and sisters and, and, uh, and guidance, uh, walk up this mountain to sort of like touch that realm of, of, of that, that other dimension of real life. And, uh, I feel, I feel quite, uh, inspired, uh, for that, that coming and, uh, just today, I've kind of repositioned myself in this place um, that's much more action oriented to be able to work up in that in that on that land and getting that development done and and uh, yeah, so I feel quite quite inspired. Um, but as I say, you know, still uh, still a couple of years away from uh, really being able to to open those dimensions in such a way that it's that people I can talk about. Oh, there's a real world that that love is a dimension of being that is that most of us really have never experienced you know what i mean or or the the fullness of of what of what personal love interpersonal love of what divine love can be uh of what life and, and abundance and the natural world can really bring into our lives and, and the ways that it can support us and and we can live and breathe and be you know truly one with nature and supported by the mother and and the ways that that the dimension of spirit really is real you know what i mean there's a dimension of trans transcendent consciousness and 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 pure awareness and and that you know that that you know god is real you know what i mean and there's a whole dimension of reality that expresses itself within the frequencies of light uh that are completely disembodied that we can access and that are a part of our natural being uh and a a, a sort of a vista beyond um the banal human experience that we're that we're allowed and able and blessed to be able to grow and develop into as a human incarnation it's like to be able to really open those worlds i can talk about it and uh i, I think i do a pretty good job in writing uh more of that probably than i do in, in spoken word well i do a pretty good job in writing to kind of like illuminate this this world of of uh this way of, of being initiated into these bigger mysteries through uh the temple the divine matrix of nature the divine uh incarnation of all of creation which is nature and, and the heart and the mind of that being and, and uh, the presence of that spirit uh, i'm excited to be able to really fully um uh, open those worlds for people i'm a big fan of that um meditation teacher called adya shanti and he's really interesting but one that one of the things i like about adya shanti is he's just really he can state really complex ideas in a really simple way and one of the things I always like about him is when he talks about enlightenment, he talks, he uses the word life. So he doesn't talk about enlightenment. And you just reminded me of that when you were saying you're just trying to walk towards life, right? And in a way, I think what happens is, and you mentioned this, is we get caught up in these different frequencies or thought structures. And a lot of a lot of what is a lot of what Adyashanti is suggesting, for example, is is releasing those things and just actually being aware of what's there. So like you're in the nature and becoming aware of what is, right? What is, not what we think it is, not what our interpretation is of the way things are, but what is actually here and actually just observing rather than thinking about or um, interpreting or whatever. So it's really, you're given a really, cl it's interesting you're listening to you, <laughs> listening to you, some people might, I mean, I talk the same way sometimes and you know, it's easy to come across like to like, like you, it's almost like for people who are not ready for it, you know, my kids were calling me a hippie the other day, you know, cause of the way I'm talking. Um, but what you're actually talking about is, um, it, you're really talking about liberation, which is interesting. Cause I sometimes wonder about the ayahuasca world. Like, is it really a path towards liberation? I was lucky my shaman also had spent some time in India and he really did the same thing as your guy did to you. You know, he just sort of dipped your consciousness into the divinity. And uh, 
I don't think you get over that once you've seen it. It almost becomes like a responsibility to tell people. In a very real way. In a very real, real way. Yeah. Yeah. No, as I say, like, uh, uh, without, the, without the potency of being able to really, to really do it and stand in that place, I'm still, I'm still uh, you know, like I said, I'm here today. I'm halfway up the mountain. You know what I mean? Uh, physically, metaphorically, you know, I'm, I'm halfway there. Let's say we're building, I'm at, I'm at a base camp here, which is, a, you know, we've made good progress. You know what I mean? We're in a, we're in a good spot. Yeah, yeah. This is, this is uh, uh, quite, quite foretelling to be in this location and, and um, uh, you know, actually, uh, you know, tomorrow I will be up there. You know, I'll be up there and, and, uh, and drinking you, and, and your, digging and clearing land. Do you see your project here as oh. more, obviously, like there's places, um, which are focused on physical healing. It sounds to me that you're more focused on really sort of the process of uh, walking towards life, if you will, right? It's more of a sort of like an awakening experience you're sort of moving people towards. Is that kind of what you're thinking? Yeah, it really feels that way. It feels, it feels very much more so uh, like a fully integrated path. I understand, uh, as I say, like I'm working here in a, in a deep way with the tree of life itself. And it feels like in this, this kind of like broader matrix of nature itself, uh, and I feel like in that way, there's a there's a sort of fullness in the in the way. You know what I mean? It's a way. When you read my my writing online, uh, I, I I consider it. You know, I say that sounds funny even to say right now my writing because very much I feel like I've I've uh, you know I have a connection to this to this source of life. I have a connection to the spirit of life itself. And, uh, and these different aspects of it, which are the diets, which are the trees, which are, um, wow. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, will, I will try to catch this on it's too small. There's no way. A hummingbird on this branch that just came to land. Wow. Uh, <laughs> huge long beak right here. Uh, but yeah, there's like a spirit of life, you know what I mean? There's a real spirit in the nature that I feel uh, quite blessed to uh, to be in contact with on a regular basis. And uh, moments like that, you know, where it comes in really close and you can really feel it and, and hear it and breathe it and see it and, and know that it's real, know that it's alive and know that she cares. You know, it's really um, the diets and the medicine, the, the healing that we find in nature and specifically when we when we encounter it um, consciously, there's another one. That's a different bird, not even a hummingbird. Uh, when we encounter it consciously in the nature, the conscious spirit within the diet uh, is so palpable and so clear. It's such a clear signal, such a clear communication that nature cares, that nature loves, that nature cares, that nature is conscious, that nature is thoughtful, that nature is like, here and making an immense effort to help us heal and to help us recover as a species to help us become restored in that perfection that is nature itself and when you're in nature we all know that like the most pure moments that we experience are in the natural world what, what is more pure than watching a sunset from the top of a mountain what is more pure than standing on the beach and letting the waves wash over your feet and seeing the birds fly by and, and the clouds actively curl with the with the winds of the ocean it's like it's such a compelling energy within nature that we all know to be the realest thing that we have experienced can't human being can't experience and it's like there even within that there are worlds yet to be discovered worlds yet to be to be explored and uh yeah as i said it was nice that He's still sitting here. The hummingbird is still. I don't know if you can see on the video. I've just kept it over there because it's active. But uh, but the hummingbird is still there. He's four feet from my face. It's like, uh, yeah, quite quite real, quite real. This this world. And to say like, um, you know, I might I might sound like a hippie in some ways or sound a bit a bit. Oh, this guy's really been, you know, been drinking a lot of ayahuasca. Uh, but but in many ways, yeah, you know, I mean, there's there's a, there's a reality within that. Uh, within the real world, and and I do feel that that ayahuasca is a in, in a big way a liberation into that into that that world and kind of um, a doorway pulling us 
pulling us, pulling us deeper into that, into that connection with the earth itself, connection with the spirit itself. And when we're in that, then you're rooted to the earth and connected to the light. And you're a pure channel. You're, you're, you're experiencing the, the, the fluidity and the presence of the moment itself. And, and, you know, that's when the spirit becomes alive. That's when you become a living spirit at that point. And I do feel as a way, in that way, uh, healing is a necessary part of that process because if you're, if you have blockages in your energetic system, if you're, um, those blockages keep us from expressing or connecting uh, to ourselves, to our hearts, to our, our, our passion and purpose, to the earth itself, and ultimately to the spirit. But once you've done that work, then, you know, then, yeah, we experience what, what is in other ways, you know, called li a liberation. And what I feel like is really beautiful, I'll kind of try to tie it in here, but what I think is really beautiful about plant medicine as a path and ayahuasca as a path is because it's actually rooted to the earth. The plants have a root in the earth and in nature, but at the same time, they're expressing the same frequencies of consciousness and of, of embodied uh, divinity that human beings have access. So, um, like I work with one called Niwe Rao. I work with a tree uh, closely. We'll, we'll move into the diets. We should discuss diets. But uh, I work with a tree called Niwe Rao that absolutely epitomizes uh, a Sufi style heart based awakening, awakening through the heart, this like radical liberation into love, into divine union through the heart, mystical, enraptured love. And, and when, I'm, when I'm with that spirit and the the oceans of beauty and gratitude and connection and, and faith and, and just like transcendent mystery um, embodiment, mystical and mystical embodiment are just only only Sufis have written anything that comes close to describing what that level of awakening truly is. And the fact that I find it in the nature uh, to an ability to channel a light and embodiment of that frequency through which to receive an initiation of that quality, um, again, like speaks to something, speaks to something and, and uh, these kind of worlds of mystery beyond. And, and as I say, I understand this path as a, as a way that nature is holding the space to initiate us for children into the fullness of what the full light of being, you know what I mean? It goes all the way. There's no limit on this. And you may be in the forest with little plants and you're down here and it feels very like, I'm not really sure what's happening down here. I can't really tell. There's a lot of shade here. I know I'm getting healing, but there's a lot of shade. But when you, when you start to approach the trees and, and, and the canopy of being, you know, there's a real like limitless potential there um, in the, in the sky. You know what I mean? It's, it's a very uh, a beautiful way nature has for that's and, really and uh, that's really baby. uh it's really a beautiful metaphor you're using there about the canopy of being you know there's a metaphor of like which we've been using here about the roots then moving up uh to the air which to me is kind of like when i was meditating in the past like i would be i think I, I'm not sure if this is correct, but I was meditating like on Om Mani Padme Hum, and that Buddha's mantra has has some connotations of that, like the part, you start the mantra and you're sort of in the mud, you're in the mud as the roots, and then you move through the water, and then you become the lotus in the air at the top of the water. So it's interesting that you're using different but similar metaphors here about the canopy of being, which kind of is analogous to the lotus of being maybe in Buddhism. It's uh, it's unbelievable. I was going to ask you so what because you'd mentioned the tree of life a couple of times. But I guess that's the Noi Rao you were talking about, and um, I was thinking uh, <clears throat> over all these years you've been doing this, you've obviously done a lot of plant medicines, and I noticed you were do you were you were leading people or you were about to do some kind of like guided retreat on Bob and Santa, and um, I was interested because I've had some big experience with Bob and Santa. I was interested if you had any. Uh, any little sort of anecdotal stuff you could tell us about, like for that, because that's a pretty popular plant, I think, you know. So yeah, no, we we've been we've been on the phone for twenty minutes now, and we haven't really mentioned diets, which is kind of uh, uh, beautiful, <laughs> I think, in a way. Uh, so I I understand the diets to be a process through which we attain that level of realization. So uh, it's like 
for me, like I said before, you can drink ayahuasca, but uh, <sighs> looking around, it's convenient enough here. Typically, almost you could uh, you could point to one, but in this particular location where I'm sitting, no. Uh, but if if ayahuasca is not growing on a tree, it grows as a bush. It grows quite gangly, a lot of little branches. There's no real coherency or structure to it. A lot of leaves, and it'll pull in a lot of like it'll pull in a lot of light, but um, but doesn't doesn't reach its fullness uh, without a tree. And my understanding of of the way that diets, um, the way that the dietas complement the ayahuasca is that it's sort of doing the work. So different works, different diets. Obisana obviously representing the heart and the heart work, and, and uh, I mentioned Niwe Rao before, which. Uh, it's kind of, I, I have like three big allies as far as hard work goes, which is Bobinsana, uh, Marusa, and Niwirao. Bobinsana is very much the personal interior heart. Marusa is kind of this heart field, this this uh, area around, like the hug, the zone of the hug, where we embrace others, where we meet others, and also really beautifully uh, through which we love ourselves as well. Uh, and Niwirao is this very mystical heart, this sort of awakened heart. Um, and each one of these diets seems to express, I want to like point at my body because I'm because very uh, expressive with my hands, but um, the sanangos, there's uh, chidic sanango, ucha sanango, achuni sanango, a variety of different, this is one here that I found, uh, as a relative of ucha sanango that I found here in the forest, uh, the, the masadlans, because different forests, uh, so different different plants, not ucha sanango, it's the, uh, but same same family, and quite strong been a really strong ally strong initiation and uh all, all of those kind of really work on the on the foundation of our being on the lower three chakras the root chakras uh a lot of uh karmic patterns are trapped in our in our solar plexus and root a lot of uh imprinting that we get that's based in uh based in trauma based in scarcity based in um situations in our childhood that aren't secure uh, so yeah, this work of, of diets, this sort of therapeutic work with with, uh, with the the dietas, the Peruvian dietas, has been work I've been engaged in. Uh, so I did five years there uh, with Shipibo's uh, solid. Uh, they're dieting with Shipibo maestros, and and uh, after I guess about two years dieting Bobinsana, I got a very clear call uh, to begin service in her line, and there was a whole story. I like I tried to leave uh, Peru. And uh, and was kind of held there, and I uh, was on the motor car on the way to the airport, and I was clearly 20 minutes late. And um, the plants just kept saying, "We have work for you. You're supposed to be here. You're supposed to be here. We have we have work for you. Just just be patient." And uh, and then I tried to leave to go to to Pico or to, to Cusco because I liked I wanted to be in the mountains for a while, and and, and it was very clear. Uh, go back to Galpa. Go back to Galpa. And, and then I went back and I got some medicine I thought I needed, and I tried to leave again and. And uh, it was very clear, like, you know, uh, keeping me there. And, and uh, I was very frustrated. And, and uh, Spirit said, look, just go to the park in the morning and do breath work and we'll explain to you why you're here. And uh, so the next morning I went and, I, and uh, it was very early and, and uh, I woke up and I was laying in bed and I literally felt something tap me on the shoulder. I felt a physical tap on my shoulder and uh, it was like, come on, come on. And uh, so I went to the park and I started breathing and, and uh, very quickly my whole world exploded in pink and white flowers and and uh, very clear Bob and Sana's presence and and uh i've been i've been very well within her her um her world her love space her heart space her uh her healing realm for for many years and and uh it's been beautiful opening and healing and, and restoration within my own life and and uh something i've been really blessed to to uh guide others and and watch others uh, receive and, and uh, support others in that process of, of uh, healing a lot of really deep um, uh, core wounding, core parental wounding, and, and uh, childhood heart heart traumas, and and uh, becoming restored into the frequency of love and sort of reborn into into heart centered beings. Very special plant, Bobinsana. Very special. <coughs> it's interesting. You were um, when you've always been involved with the. Um, a, a lot with dietas what is your um like your main like for me i i've i've done some dietas um and usually for me it's like uh it's usually at night like about 2 a.m 
I would get woken up and then start getting floods of information about various things. And then I guess sometimes during the day I'd get stuff like sometimes walking around. I'd like um, one time in particular, I remember one plant was showing me like where the chakras are on trees. And I'm like, OK, but um, is there a specific time when you're dieting or is it just the flow is pretty much is a constant kind of communication you're in with the plant? Also, also is the. If you're not dieting, do you feel that, that connection, once you've made it, you can access it whenever you want, even if you're not dieting anything? Yeah, you know, it's hard to say because I really haven't stopped dieting in like eight years, maybe. Uh, <laughs> but, I, but I do have a moment. I'm kidding slightly, but um, I did have a moment after, after this new morale diet in, uh, I did in uh, November, December. Uh, into January, as I arrived in, in Brazil, I had a little like uh, interlude in Texas for a couple of weeks, and then my arrival in Brazil. And plants were like, "Look, you're gonna like pause your new Rao diet for a couple of weeks and eat normal food. You're gonna be in Texas, like eat some tacos and and uh, be out with your friends and like live normally for a minute." Um, and even during that time, I didn't feel the force of the plant fade at all. The sensation of open heartedness, of connection, of of uh, of you know continual awakening just kind of stay with me and and uh yeah for me um basically because the process itself is so consuming i kind of have about like uh, at any given time i think the last time i i had a moment of, of uh to check in and count i had like 14 different different active diets happening at one time and depending on what's <laughs> happening for me and what given moment, I mean, yeah yeah you know um I guess I have a particular, you know, temperament for this, uh, or something, you know, but, but also, uh, it's like, I'll find myself in a moment where I'm interacting with a specific process. So when I come up against a process of like this one here, for example, I feel like it's really helping me, uh, relationships, human relationships are incredibly important. It's the foundation of, of our whole lives, truly like without human relations, you have nothing. And, and I find here, I'm kind of like, I'm revivifying a lot of, uh, relationships from the past. Uh, I've been coming to the same region for 10 years. Uh, I've made some new connections. Uh, my connections with, with clients as well, this whole realm of like, I really want to be at my fullest for my human relationships and for the, the people that depend on me and people around me. I want all my ends to be tight. I want people to feel cared for. I want people to feel like genuine presence. I want things to be like solid in my life. I want to be in a you know dependable place for my relationships. And um, this this particular sanango seemed to kind of come in in this really beautiful way. I was walking up the mountain uh, one day and I saw the leaf and I was like, I know this, I know this leaf. And although this is quite different than than the ones in in Peru, uh, it's just very distinct. The family is very distinct. And it, it has a sap, a resin that's milky, has a milky latex resin. And so I have my machete with me, and I, I uh, gent gently and, and with permission nicked the side of the tree and saw the latex come out. I thought, okay, beautiful. Like, I know this is a master plan. And, and uh, so I brought this, this into my life. And, and in moments where I feel that process come in, I, I encounter a moment in my own perceptual awareness where I feel the lack of that firmness of energy, that solid connection with another human being, where I feel myself like, oh, I just bumped up against that theme again. There's that theme again. There's that theme again. Then I go and take that. And there are moments where I want to be more strong in human relationships, and I go to that plant. And there are moments where I want to be more uh, felt, and more open, and more compassionate, more accessible, more present in my heart with other people. And that would be a moment where I come and, I, and I'll maybe make a, a tea of marusa or take a small a small handful of, of marusa again this tree uh, sorry a small plant that really works in this interrelational aspect of human the human heart where we relate to other people and, and so in those moments i go to that medicine and i go to that to that either you know within uh, on my altar uh in my prayer in song in physical form uh, i kind of go to those energies and support that that healing or that growth and development. And I really feel there's a, I'll explain this really quickly within the diets and within nature, uh, the plants, the small plants 
uh, seem to really hold a healing frequency. All this like underbrush, all the all the like a couple of meters up to a couple of meters tall. But the trees seem to really hold a developmental frequency. So it's a, it's a, I want to grow tall. I want to grow up. And it's like uh, if I'm being coherent here, I, I hope um, I'm being coherent here. But if you're stunted in your growth, if you experience a trauma, your your growth along that line, whatever line of, of development that 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 experience uh lives along you will experience a truncation or a um stunting of growth along that line and so the plants come in and really help us kind of open and heal and remove those blockages so that we have a a smooth channel again we can move it psychic energy through that channel again life life force energy through that channel again and then the trees really help to bring in that light really kind of illuminate the higher realms and capacities of of that of that aspect of ourselves and help us grow into those into those higher realms and it's really a beautiful kind of tandem process that, that they take you through and and uh yeah as i say like uh to me it's almost kind of a nature's yoga in that way you know there really is a lot of parallels between um this way this natural way and and what the eastern uh traditions have have uh, discovered for us and i really kind of use the the map of the chakras that the east has given us along with the the energies of the plants as a kind of tandem model which we can put especially with ayahuasca as well with breath work also can really push a lot of energy through those channels uh healing and an activating force with the plants and the trees and you really get a, a quite compelling and quite effective uh natural model um or natural uh, path not just a model uh, an actual living path yeah I wonder, you know, I imagine like um, I'm not sure like what your your business model with clients is and stuff, but like I know like when I was in Peru, you got a lot of like pretty dark, dark horse types from the States coming down. And they've like had like a really tough life. They've got lots of negative energy. And um, and then, you know, like if you go into diet, I know my myself, I screwed up various diets at various points by not heeding the wise words of various uh, teachers or shamans and and I, I had some pretty bad experiences um, of my own making, you know, with plants. But um, I'm interested, like, uh, have you had any, like, dark, like, when you were starting out, did you have any, like, tough experiences yourself? And also when you're working with clients, you sometimes have tough experiences with them as they work through this dark, sort of stunted, truncated material that you're talking about? Um, my work has been pretty Blessed, I feel like you know. I I won't say that. Um, depends on where you're where you're kind of aiming, uh, because I I don't feel as though. Um, okay, yeah. So basically, it flows really beautifully uh, through the diets. In my in my experience, uh, and I do pretty well. I feel like uh, I, I spend a lot of time in care and in uh, securing the container and making sure people are well prepared and, and and that they're meeting the plant and the process in a good way uh but yeah no there's a lot of density in the forest there's a lot of density in in uh i think of how to say this respectfully um there's a lot of density in, in peru in the peruvian ways um and a lot of people i think that are drawn there have uh uh Karma in the realm of witchcraft. Uh, karma in the realms. Karma in those realms. Uh, that makes it quite, quite strong, uh, and quite, quite challenging. But uh, when you're holding it in the light, when you're actually really holding like true light, when you have a maestro who's holding true light, uh, truly connected to like the no the nobility and the light within the trees and the light the light of God, um, everything flows like really beautifully. People get. Like I have uh, just before this call, I was I was on on uh, in communication with the client, and she's definitely having a lot of strong work coming up. She's working with Bobinsana and, and about to move into Marusa, uh, and a lot of strong energy from her childhood is coming up. And but Bobinsana is beautiful. It it's uh, she holds a beautiful space. She brings a lot of light and love and and uh, beautiful. You experience the energies of healing through the diet, and although the content is heavy at times it comes through with um through a beautiful channel that is nature that is natural that is that is um 
the light of nature is there to guide us and to, to, to for me i don't know uh i experienced that in peru uh i definitely i'm aware of what you're talking about but now i don't live in peru and uh i haven't been there in three years and life is uh, not two two years um life is a lot more bright um in the world than it is there when you're and it's really challenging when you're working to, with your clients is this uh something people can do remotely or is it like you actually just doing it in person or both modalities no the the i I've, I've done a lot of in-person work in the states and in europe uh but currently i'm here in the forest and uh, the channel flows really well when I'm here. I noticed that, um, you know, I did work in, in Florida also, and and uh, I feel like I'm getting a better connection and that people are getting a better a better uh, result from the diets when I'm here in the forest and they're there in person and we can and in their lives. And, and there's a lot of reasons people often kind of question whether dieting in, in your normal life is a is um you know is coherent. And, as I say, you know, for me, I experience the energies through which I'm connecting, through which I'm healing in my life. And, and versus with some of these trees, like clearly, you know, uh, I did a two month diet with Noyerao last year and I was living with some folks in Florida. And by the end, I think I weighed like 135 pounds, maybe something like that. I was <laughs> skeleton, you know what I mean? And, and my, my, uh, my my landmate there and i was like in weeks of silence and i said i can't talk i can't talk and, and it was kind of like you know uh avoiding people around the land singing non-stop and and uh working crazy hours while fasting and and um you know yeah it was quite my my i think my uh my, my buddy mike at the time was a bit uh and nervous he was a bit scared i think of what i was doing you know what i mean without a context uh and and a supportive container i really need uh, someone to wash my clothes and, um, you know, like the, uh, like the abuelas would, you know what I mean? Like a, gr a grandma would there in Peru and somebody prepare meals is really helpful. And, um, it, when some of these bigger tree diets, it can be really helpful to have support and, uh, and a community support that really understands what you're doing. Uh, because the, the big tree work, um, is really another level. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of the, the heart work and even the sonangos, uh, managed to get really beautiful connection with folks uh, while they're in their lives. And, and uh, you know, our heart really lives embodied within our lives. And so that, that work of Bobinsana and the work of Marusa really, uh, and, and even Niwa Rao, uh, a lot of these plants and trees really does actually, uh, you know, strongly resonate within the life space. And, and uh, I do a lot of coaching to help people uh, find those places, those spaces to commune and to connect. Um, in the ways they talk about, they use this word concentration, concentration meditation. So, um, and it's basically the idea of meditating in in present connection with a plant or with it. With a, you can do it with a with a you know a divine spirit. A, um, so that you know the David frequencies also. I feel like they understand this this way of, of concentration uh, in the East as well. But the idea is to sit in presence uh, with a, with another being. And also with yourself and your own process. And so it's not a, a meditation of, of no mind or a, a pure present awareness. It's a it's a meditation uh, on the consciousness, on the content of your own being happening, the, the content of your own process unfolding, and also at times engaging uh, the healing wisdom, the the healing spirit, the present awareness of uh, of of the diet of the tree, of the plant, of of the work itself. And so I do a lot of um, a lot of my work is about helping people find that and refine that that's, space and really kind of develop and open that. That's really interesting. So I've done a lot of concentration meditation, but you're you're actually the your object of meditation is the plant and the dieta space. Is that right? That's cool. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. As I say, like uh, there's kind of kind of two dimensions to that. One is 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 the connection with the self, and the other is the connection with the plant and and depending on kind of where you're starting, depending on where somebody's at in the process, I may say, look, you know, let's just take breaths and let's start by breathing into the heart. And we'll breathe into the heart and breathe into the heart and bring real awareness and present awareness into the feeling sensations of the heart. Does it feel blocked? Does it feel open? Um, does it feel anxious or does it feel relaxed? This kind of uh, developing a dialogue and an openness with the heart or or the sacral or the root or wherever the work is, um, is one kind of 
uh, entry point into concentration and into the process. And another is is actual uh, breathing into the presence of the plant. That's, uh, that can often be, you know, I've had blessing, uh, blessed moments here where I'm literally sitting underneath uh, the plant itself. And that's really, really special and positive. Or, or to sit and visualize that you're sitting underneath the plant itself. Really positive one. Just visualize yourself sitting at the base of this tree. And I'll often send people photos or, or uh, you know, a description or some sort of trying to evoke that frequency. Uh, also, in the astral, the plants all have, like, specific character and color, specific color um, that is their character. And and through that, um, you know, Niwara comes, Bobinsana obviously comes in pink and white. And Niwara uh, plays in the spectrum of pink and green and also this really beautiful, like, uh, kind of astral violet ultraviolet astral kind of frequency that's really special and, and you can kind of cue people into those frequencies and and uh, breathe into breathe that frequency and that spirit that energy into your body into your heart into those chakras into where you're feeling uh pain or constriction you can literally not only ingest the medicine but also sort of uh imbibe the spirit and frequency of the plant itself so yes yeah, i say a lot of that work really flows in a in a space of um you know, whatever, I've said enough weird stuff already, I guess I can say, uh, you know, it's a channel in space. It's a, it's a mediumship. It's a work of mediumship that I do uh, in that space that, that is uh, I've cultivated over, like I said, many years, um, seven years dieting these, these Peruvian trees and, and a couple of more dieting, uh, you know, some mushrooms and adaptogens, other healing plants. Um, so quite, quite a, a lot of fasting, a lot of diet, a lot of, uh, you know, silence and some fear, uh, uh, with the plants, uh, I have a developed a, a space of trust uh, with the with those frequencies that really um, through which flows a lot of healing and and, uh, and beauty and kind of presence awareness. When it's, when Dude, it's you're it's, you're, it's you're blowing my mind here with the way you were talking about breathing into the presence of the plants. For ten years or so, I've been very studious with. Uh, I bumped into this book a few years ago called Initiation into Hermetics by this guy, Franz, <clears throat> Franz Berdan, who was a, a magician in the 1940s, I guess, who thought he was a reincarnated Tibetan Lama. But um, he's got a lot of uh, practices involving specific types of breathing into various constructs. And in the last six months, um, there's a guy... You may not be aware of him, called Sifu Mark Rufus. He's a uh, Rasmus, Sifu Mark Rasmus, and he's a uh, he's a Qigong expert in Thailand, who's um, who's also an expert in the Franz Bardon systems. And those systems are basically built around. Uh, I mean, I guess you could you they're typically like in that context, they're sort of Kabbalistic systems. But they're also reflected in like um, Tantra and Sanskrit ideas too. So the idea in those contexts is what you'll do is you'll concentrate on specific, for example, a good example is you might uh, concentrate on the <clears throat> the letter G, which has a sort of, uh, it's basically what they do is they map out divine vibrations into different letter forms and then with different, um, with different correspondences. So you might, for example, G's, uh, related with the color green and also with the musical note F. And there's a whole bunch of different correspondences which you can focus on at different levels in the physical, astral, uh, um, mental, and ash, uh, and the um, spiritual plane. And so it's really interesting because it all sounds kind of like abstract, but when you actually get into the space, you move into this sort of purity of consciousness it's, it's completely simplified and isolated and beautiful all by itself. And it's often punctuated by these this sort of pure uh, perception of color and a spiritual vibration of divinity. And it's really interesting when you were talking there about breathing into the presence of plants, um, because in a, you know, in a kind of way you could map plants to that model too. I mean, that's almost like what you were that was what it rung a bell for me. Like, wow, you could actually you could actually move into the plant space and meditate on that vibrational space with the color. And it's really fascinating. You mentioned the ultraviolet light coming out of the um, uh, the uh, Rinoa tree because 
that in the Bardonian system, that is the color of the Akashic realm, right? So the Akashic realm is is the place from whence um, one might, I mean, from a, from a magician's perspective, that's where you actually gain the actual power. But it's not really power. It's more, it's it's safety. Because once you're in that realm, the, so the lower realms can't really hurt you anymore. So it's really interesting. You've, you've sort of gotten to the space guided by the plants themselves. The big thing that really astonished me is like when I was dieting is the plants were teaching me about chakras. And then I was having visions of Krishna and Ganesha. And oh, the other thing I was going to say here too, I know I'm sort of I'm a bit all over the place here, but I mean, you're tweaking me here, is um, one of the things I discovered or two is when I focus on such an object like the color green, um, uh, which is also the heart chakra, it's also Jupiter, um, or it might be a plant. But what I find is when you focus, when you gain perfect concentration, oftentimes the spirit is the spirit evokes, like you get an evocation of the spirit. And I'm wondering is when you're focused on these plants and you're you're doing concentration, focus on the plants, do you actually end up uh, get in contact with the plant spirit in that moment or is that something that's ongoing all the time if you follow me yeah i well okay yeah yeah yeah. no i do uh you asked you asked the question there at the end that will answer but then i want to go back to into the content of what kind of i feel like i can uh, i have a my own um kind of a felt felt face around around this thing that, that i think triggered you uh, so we'll, we'll see if we can cool. uh, come into uh, uh, come into a, a picture there. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I definitely uh, I spend a lot of time in that in that space of concentration, it, just as a part of maintaining um, the connection, developing these connections. So at some point we'll talk about this uh, rose and uh, rose and lavender and rosemary uh, diet. That's one that like you know in order to to gestate this thing, this offering that they're giving me. Uh, I have to maintain that connection. I have to spend time in their presence. And sometimes it happened earlier as I as I uh, got into the water earlier. I, 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 there's a you can probably hear the water from here, but uh, there's a little waterfall and a beautiful little pool down here. As I got in the water, I got another series of like you know very clear uh, connection and communication from those three. A clarification and, and a really beautiful moment as I as I entered the water and this space of of, of purification and, and reconnection that the water brings is very very beautiful moment. So sometimes it comes in, in just active moments like that, uh, which is, again, part of why living in nature helps a lot. Uh, and also, uh, you know, get a strong calls at times, you know, please come sit in my presence and, uh, and give me that space. And uh, that's, that, that'll be what, what, uh, what opens the door. Um, as far as kind of what, you're, what you were describing before, is it's this kind of like this linkage between other meditations you've done and and kind of like what I, the way I understand it is that there's sort of uh, only one real, real, real matrix of, of archetypal energy and, and, and of conscious awareness. And that, that different, you know, the uh, color may represent some aspect of our, of our feeling and our, and our internal lived awareness or our, our lived experience. Uh, a plant may, uh, I understand the, the trees and the plants to express very pure and refined uh, archetypal frequencies within nature, and that we're also, uh, you know, a reflection and embodiment of the Gaian matrix, of the same natural matrix of energies, and and uh, whether, you know, at times it may get uh, a bit skewed. I want the example that jumps into my head is, you know, an apple is an apple, but an apple is also a computer, and like, and so there's a, you know, it may get skewed in the world of man a little bit. Uh, you know, because I'm not sure that those things necessarily, uh, ha you know, truly correlate in the realm of the real. Uh, but in terms of nature and and this idea of kind of uh, restoring or recovering our our natural imprint, our beautiful uh, divine imprint as a soul and as a spirit, uh, the natural world really embodies these same frequencies. And so we can go to Bovinsana and she embodies the frequency of love. We can go to Rose and she embodies the frequency of the Divine Mother uh, or the Divine Feminine and the White Rose, the Divine Mother. We can sort of utilize the, the pure frequencies of these plants as like a tuning fork almost 
a way to attune ourselves to the purity of that vibration and and you know above and sana to the, to the purity of love and 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 the actual you know the purity of the human heart and and we bring in that energy and we sing her song and we give her our space and and we you know we give presence to our dreams and and do breath work and these kind of energies and and uh you know uh, ways to engage the process of of healing and purification and through that we become a more pure and natural embodiment of our own self which is necessarily reflected within the natural world and, and it just so happens that some of these plants really have an aptitude uh they're sort of like uh this bird yeah this came by this hummingbird came back uh these plants really seem to hold this really beautiful really keen uh sort of caring intelligence specific plants have sort of been seemingly refined they have refined their own energy into healing met healing medicine uh, a path and a process of healing um through their evolution that that again is like you know hints at some a bigger uh an, another a dimension of a reality that's it's far beyond uh just a simple attunement to that vibration okay i'm, I'm focusing on uh this specific uh, chant i'm chanting this mantra and that mantra is a purity and is gonna gonna reflect you know uh an attuned state of consciousness within that frequency of my being, uh, the natural world seems to have this this extra extra component of being consciously alive and and caring and loving, uh, which I kind of appreciate. It's funny is that as soon as my mind went into that into that dimension and activated that dimension, the hummingbird came back and was here and like uh, <laughs> singing kind of uh, in the space, kind of a uh, quite quite. <clears throat> Nice. Do you find that your life has become a lot more uh, synchronistic, like with hummingbirds coming in and this kind of stuff? Yeah, you know, uh, I'll I'll give you that one uh, in a, in a sense that that happened after my after a, a strong Kundalini activation happened many years ago. Um, it was definitely entheogenic related, but but uh, yeah, I had a, I was I had a Kundalini awakening uh, about 10 or 12 years ago that was like incredibly profound. After which case, I experienced several years of like of, of uh, profound psychosis, uh, kind of borderline, just navigable uh, psychosis uh, in which everything was incredibly profoundly synchronistic. And um, but here in this world, it's a lot more uh, conscious. It's less just purely archetypal and energetic. Uh, kind of response yeah. to this uh, and a lot more like inspirited it's a lot more alive there's something uh something reaching across uh from the natural world that's really uh calling me that's yeah. really nice wow wow um i i've got a whole bunch of questions written down here because i there's all so many things you've said which are interesting oh here's one slight change in the subject here but uh you've got your land here and um you sent me a document a while ago which i read through which was really interesting about um about a specific style of farming i guess and cultivation and um how does like i don't know if you're going to give like a rough idea of what that is and your objectives for that it sounds you're kind of looking for some kind of like sort of land sharing kind of thing where people work together to something like that how explain explain what that's all about oh yeah uh so it's a it's a global revolution of uh of in, in an innovation of agriculture that allows the humanity to be free uh again live in connection with the earth and in harmony with one another uh so a tree called moringa olifera moringa olifera uh is really like my my uh my master guide she's the in all of the work that I do with all the entheogens and, and other trees, and even even Noya Rao is like, you know, incredibly potent, incredibly potent, incredibly potent energy. And, and all of it, uh, realistically, creators like uh, Moringa is really the best thing that you can bring to the humanity. The thing that we need the most um, is the tree of life itself. And uh, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll correct you because you said it earlier, and I thought, well, this is an esoteric point that should be corrected. Uh, I understand Noya Rao to be. Uh, like the spirit of the tree of life itself, the spiritual embodiment, the voice, the mind, the spirit, the light of that frequency, yep. but the embodiment, the 
body of the tree of life itself, the incarnation on this plane of the, like the true spirit of the garden of Eden itself is Moringa Oliveira. And yeah, is this kind of like a, a parallel line, but, but um, in terms of this understanding of that, the, the, the tree of life with the spirit of nature, the spirit of life itself of creation is really trying to help us at a number of levels. And, you know, one of them is, is this, this dimension of the heart of Bobinsana, of, of Niwarao, of Marusa, of heart work. And another is the spirit is the realm of, of uh, you know, of, of enlightenment of Noya Rao, this kind of, of ayahuasca, this, this, this work up here. Uh, but one of those dimensions that's incredibly foundationally important, absolutely necessary, essential, is, the, is how we relate to the actual earth that we stand on where our energy comes from, where our energy goes, and, and how we receive life support and, and how we live in connection to, to, to life itself, the matrix of life itself. And currently, humanity is locked into, I don't know how to do this without just being honest, uh, because it's really not, it's not my frame, but, but I have to say, because it is. Um, humanity is, is locked into a matrix of, of mind and, and exploitation. It's locked into a matrix that extracts resources from the earth and also from human being, enslaved human beings and is amassing that energy at, at these upper echelons of a, of a small 1% of the world's population who is, who is in control. That's just, um, again, I'm not, I'm not making YouTube videos about that, but, but I can't speak about anything else with, it's hard to speak about the truth, the reality, without at least addressing that that's real. And my understanding is that the tree of life itself is really helping uh, us to become liberated of that matrix. And there are a variety of. I'm writing a. I'm writing a. I don't know. Call it a book. I'm writing a book for this for this energy, or describing this energy. And, and though it's a book about gardening and this new kind of way of of living, of uh, human life way. Uh, very quickly, it got into the territory of, of in order to live in this in the garden uh, of perfection, uh, you know, this this garden of peace and beauty. We have to also become an internal reflection of that, which requires a process of healing and eternal illumination and, and liberation of the consciousness into the present moment. So they're kind of very tandem these two these two works and realms. And you can't really do. I can't live in that enlightened realm that I want to live in without a foundation of support within the natural world, which is agroforestry. So we call it here in Brazil, which is a system of permaculture. It's a way of permaculture, but it's really a, it's a very sophisticated, well-developed uh, food forestry, agroforestry. And the idea is that, uh, so I'm blessed in this moment. Uh, I'm just gonna stand up for a moment and point at a few trees. So here behind me, we have bananas. We have like a tertiary layer of bananas. We have this primary layer of, of uh, uh, they're not trees. They're, you know, three, four meters tall uh, in that layer. Down here below me in the garden, which you can't quite see, there's yucca, there is um, abakashi, pineapple, a uh, variety of herbs, uh, lower story of ginger, of turmeric. Uh, and then uh, the upper story, this is a citrus here. This is an or, uh, a mandarin, mandarin orange here. Above that is a another fruit tree. Name I can't remember. Uh, Jubuchicaba. That's a Jubuchicaba. Uh, beautiful fruit tree. Above it, there's a bunch of more citrus. There are avocados growing above me. There's acai. There's a palm here that produces part of the palm. Uh, that's another acai over there. So just within this small little area of, that I'm standing in, and this is a large piece of land that, I, that I'm staying on right now, um, there's a variety of abundance. These are, these are uh, some type of citrus fruiting here. Uh, just massive abundance coming directly off the land um, in a way that, again, like supports. And, and within the systems that I work in, uh, this is this is uh, this guy calls it agro jardim, agro jardim, like a um, uh, productive garden, a marketable garden. It's not quite a forest because because his space is quite open, as you see, but but uh, definitely provides food, a plenty for for him and people that live and the neighbors. And he can take fruit to town. Uh, within the systems that I work in, 
Uh, also quite an interest in medicinal plants and trees. Also hardwood trees, specifically hardwoods construction material is incredibly important. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a all levels. I, I enjoy all of the levels of human incarnation. So I really enjoy um, I said planting, planting uh, food and, 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 um, and harvesting and also building. And I understand that in order to live in sustainable and beautiful and abundant and verdant and healthy and thriving communities that we need not only uh, food, but also homes and also medicine. We also need, you know, the, all of these levels and, and we also need income. And the systems that I work in uh, that I'm kind of like, again, receiving and implementing in, in Peru, I've worked in Peru uh, helping implement these systems with the indigenous Shipibos uh, to help give them a bit of independence and, and sustainability and a connection to the earth um, that is quite quite uh, a fertile where they live, uh, but they they mostly live in deforested places and and are reliant on the external economy and and uh, tourism and these kind of energies. And they're not really like stably rooted in in the abundance of nature. And one of the things that to tie this back into some other themes that we've been talking about, that nature is trying to bring us back to home. Nature is trying to bring us back to the garden. Nature is trying to reconnect us to the abundance of earth and the light of spirit. And also in that process, help us become healthy and, and vital and, and uh, expressed human beings that can relate to one another in harmony. And so there's kind of, like I say, a number of levels to this. There's the, there's the internal realm of, of, of healing and of coming back into a happy, uh, healthy, expressed individual self. And then there are, are realms of how we uh, learn to relate to one another in society and, and, and also to the earth itself. And then ultimately through that process to live in the light of the live in the light of God, live in the light of spirit. So yeah, this, this foundational realm of kind of restoring the garden itself, restoring Eden itself, uh, of fertile and abundant and thriving and, and, uh, prosperous. Also, these systems produce real, um, real outputs. A lot of these systems produce cacao. Cacao is very common. Cacao and coffee. Uh, my, my, uh, mentor here, Jamil that I'm staying with now, uh, grows a lot of coffee. Um, I, I really, uh, have a strong connection with Moringa olifera with the leaf itself. The leaf is really beautiful. Uh, most, most people are familiar with the leaf and also the oil, the tree, the seed of the tree produces an oil that is incredibly delicious and nourishes the human body like a lock and key. It's like, like literally could not be something in particular about the tree of life. Big surprise, uh, is almost essential to the human organism. And now that we come into the, this as we come into the connection with this tree again, this energy again, it brings vitality, it brings abundance, it brings health, it brings vigor, it brings ab an, uh, this abundance of um, like actual ease in our life way, where all of a sudden, I'm, like I said, I'm looking around at a piece of land that produces most of what I need. And, and uh, you know, like I say, I have my own, this guy has his, his way, we all have our own ways. I'm, I'm being taught and uh, over time and years uh, a way uh, that these things flow also into the market. And so in income and the needed abundance to to um, expand this way of life uh, comes naturally through that. So anyway, I, I, I love to I could talk about this all day uh, <laughs> if, if you allowed me to. But uh, yeah, quite a, quite such an I'll just say this such a really through uh specifically that moringa uh very 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 ancient very deep very special i know a lot of trees uh i know i know you know a lot of trees and uh that one is like special Amazing. deserves a, a immense immense respect uh always spoken of dearly yeah sorry go ahead yeah well we've been talking for about an hour and a half so i'm just going to sort of wrap it up here a bit but the um I'm just thinking, like, uh, where where do you see yourself in like ten years? Uh, yeah. Uh, wow. Uh, I in my words in my head the words uh here, here living in beauty, um, but but uh, surrounded by family. I'd really love to be uh, in, in a healthy and abundant community, uh, healthy people, healthy children, um, 
<laughs> lands and a still lot. Uh, um, do you have I kids? love to see that energy. Uh, uh, I do actually. I have two, two children in Canada. Ah, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I I love to see um, that the seeds of that level of, of of healthy and natural and like vibrant expression uh, actually propagated in the world. I'd love to see that um, expanding over time. I'd love to see more of that. Uh, I say I see through this work a, a vision of of life restored of of, the, of this channel, and I, I keep like keep doing this with my hand, and I and I I feel like. I'm trying to transmit this idea of like of a pattern of energy that that again like in vision is rooted to the earth and and reaching up and living at like a climax living in the light in this really beautiful way and i'd like to see that that uh, i feel like as though the work that so many of us are here doing is ultimately about restoring that beautiful pattern of of, of harmony of abundance of homeostasis of of light and of connection um in the world not only you know as a idea but in the lives that we're actually living um if i was like if i was living up in like new york state right now well uh, typically do openings and closings in person. Uh, as my work flows, I typically do like a solid touch in every third day within the diet. So a lot of the diets don't actually dose every day, every day, every day. Um, so we just kind of maintain a fluid, um, like interweaving a fluid connection throughout the space. And, and uh, you know, I have one client that's in a deep process. And every day, the last few days, I keep messaging her like, Tam, thinking about you, like what's going on? And we just, we kind of maintain that connection and often I'll get a, I'll get a communication to check in with somebody, you know, from the astral or, um, as I said, we kind of keep a schedule and, uh, I have plants typically with most of these. I have Marusa in the U S I have, uh, Bobinsana, a plenty in the U S. Uh, I've just sent some Neuer out to, or sorry, some Neuer out to the U S which is very exciting. Uh, really special tree that I harvested here in Brazil, uh, in, in Alta Paris, a really beautiful location and spent, uh, about six weeks there with the tree and and the harvesting and preparing material and deep, deep diet and really 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 special good energy in that one um it's on its way up to the u.s now so i tend to have uh, the material there stationed in the u.s I do nice. a lot of work to maintain that uh speed is, is a challenge but but uh, one that's that's fun and flows in beauty and often the the trees the spirits the energies come in a really beautiful way um, and yeah, so I do the work, I do the work virtually right now and it works quite, quite beautifully. And like I say, a lot of this work we can do in that level. And, and, um, there are others that I'm really excited about, you know, continuing to cultivate this space here, um, so that I can invite people in and we can really sit with the medicine and really open the, um, the fullness of it. And I feel really, I have this real clear, like, um, uh, call to walk in integrity, very important to me. It's been very important to me for, for many years not to, uh, you know, cross the lines of the law in, in the other countries that we live in, because, no. you know, the States has its own legal structure in Europe as well. And, and, uh, I really find, uh, um, the medicine speaks loudly. My heart speaks loudly. The wisdom of spirit speaks loudly to maintain integrity within those, within those bounds. And, and, uh, at the same time, I'm I'm hopeful that by walking in that way, that eventually we'll be able to open these kind of spaces in the U.S. as well, and that it'll be a, a path that opens in a, in a really nice way, uh, and that the the seed, the root here of having vines and having a plantation and having this solid root in the forest itself, in the nature itself, that a place where we can come to, to truly like retreat. It's funny. I try to like I'm trying to, to to understand the difference between what I'm doing here and what's happening in in uh, in Peru. And, you know, this isn't really like my vision, you know, even at all, I receive this land as like a gift. And I, uh, I'm almost like, you know, this is not my manifestation. This is like something that has come through this, through this channel that I didn't really, I saw it in dreams years ago. And I, and I got this real sense of like, that's the place, look for that place and be aware. Um, this specific region is very fertile and abundant, very peaceful and beautiful. And, and, um, 
anyway, yeah, as I say, like I really understand this work as a temple, as a as a community, as a as a sacred way. You know what I mean? Uh, here in Brazil, it's a church. Churches, it's truly community. There's not a the tourism doesn't really doesn't really exist here. I'm the only one that they see. I'm the only gringo for a long way away. You know what I mean? And, and there's just but they but they're regularly in the work and in the world and and uh, so I really like that. Um, the thing that touched me about the Santo Diamond when I first came here was that community model, was the beauty of like living and, and singing and praying and, and, and thriving in connection with the spirit and with one another and really coming together in those moments of, of ceremony to, to commune uh, as, as like in union, as a unit, as a family, as, a, as like a one living, breathing being. And, and, uh, and again, like uh around that center axis which is life itself which is the mystery of, of all creation really uh um yeah just like one one step at a time uh right now we're, we're doing really good work with the diets and, and really cultivating the connection and uh, helping people really get into that into that realm of receptivity so that we can be healthy enough to really come together and and, and connect and and uh, understand and really relate to the mystery um so yeah quite quite excited about the the unfolding of all of it Dude, that was no, really great. Well, 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 Works well, really well. It's really inspiring talking what? to you, man. I'm telling you, you've got a great vibe, dude. Great vibe coming off you, man. So I think it's really cool. Send me over your contact information. I'll add on down to the bottom of the video. We can wrap it up for now, but uh, that was really cool talking to you, man. It's really, uh, you got some good stuff going there, dude. So jealous. <laughs> right. <laughs> No, I appreciate it. If they come, come join us. You know what I mean? I, I definitely feel myself uh, opening opening the way. I feel extremely grateful to be living in the spirit of life, to be living this close to, to the spirit, you know what I mean? To the mystery and, and to nature, to the real, like, living, breathing, uh, alive, illuminated spirit within all creation uh, has, like, courted me in this really beautiful way and, and uh, also, you know, tested me and... and uh, and uh, put me through a lot of uh, a lot of initiation to be able to to stand in this place, and and uh, I'm excited to be able to open the door for others and and uh, watch that that light uh, begin to pour back into the world uh, and, and its restorative force, its healing force. Um, yeah, we got a good future happen, here. Man. World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's going to happen. It feels good, dude. It feels good. Nice, Jeff. Okay, let's stop the video, but it was really nice talking to you, bro. Uh, let me just stop the recording here. Hold on a second. I don't even know how to do that. How would you do that? <laughs> stop recording.